Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we were sliding downhill with this thing at the end of the last episode and you may notice the time is quite different. I, uh, I may have minimized the game intending to come back in like 15 minutes and check on it and like eight hours passed and now we're here. <laughs> I completely forgot about it. Luckily, nothing bad happened. We just slid down the hill and we can simply recover this vessel and finish up that contract. So let's see what we get in terms of science. It should be pretty decent, to be honest. And looking through the contracts that we have available right now, there's not a lot of overlap. So we might need to target some sort of an EVE flyby just to get our exploration contract done. Well, KSP, anytime you want to load. If I realized it was going to take this long... I would have started the recording after this, but here we are. 700 science out of that. Not bad. 732. I like it. So what do we want to grab from here? We're getting fairly close to getting everything other than these techs that we need to upgrade the building for. I wouldn't mind grabbing precision propulsion, getting us donuts, dumplings, getting us twitches. That would be good. Let's research that for now. And beyond that, like, specialized control for bigger reaction wheels, not a terrible idea. Heavy landing for, uh, I mean, if we're going to land on EVE, we would want that inflatable heat shield. That's also a fairly useful thing for Duna, not because we need that big of a heat shield, but just to increase the drag, right? So that sort of a heat shield is useful for Duna. We'll grab that for the moment, and then we could grab, like, nuclear propulsion. That would be good for interplanetary missions, so we could certainly research that as well. We have a fair amount more here that we need to do. Let's hop into our mission control and see what we've got. So yeah, there's just this fly by Eve, gather scientific data, and return. Okay. Well. Realistically, we could do a stripped down version. If we were to open up our, let's see, we would open up like this guy, right? So we'd do a stripped down version of this. We do not need two magnetometers. I can tell you that right now. We would not need to have these gigantors. We would not need to have these battery banks. Beyond that, I think the rest of this largely stays. Uh, we would not need to have this RCS cluster. We could, we could save a little bit of weight there. I think I would go to a larger battery size and put that right here. So that would end up being the 1K rechargeable battery bank like that. So it would end up being something along the lines of this. Now, these are a little bit skewed and I would definitely like to get these shifted a little bit here. So we're going to need that to be quad. And is that correct? That looks about correct. Yeah. That's about right. Beautiful. So something along the lines of this. Now, we could definitely... And, and I wanted to grab these guys and connect them. Well, actually, we don't necessarily want them here. I want to have them be here and connect them like this. There we go. One interesting thing that we could do is we could ditch this poodle and go for an atomic engine. Dropping the oxidizer out of these tanks. Taking this out of here, and we would put in a nuclear engine here. Probably not a Cherenkov, that's kind of huge. It is kind of huge. Out of curiosity, um, which one which one is more efficient? The nerve has an ISP of 800 in the vacuum. Versus 820 for the Cherenkov. So the 820 is definitely much better in that regard. So out of curiosity, first thing we're going to need to do is redo these struts. I want to... Oh, wow. That's some really weird mirroring. Why is it doing that kind of mirroring? Okay, let's get rid of that. I want to put a strut here and connect it down kind of like that. Okay, that'll do for now. 
and I want to do some really quick simulations on Delta V and how long this is going to burn for and how this gets into orbit. So let's put this out on the pad. Oh, I overwrote this, but I guess that's fine. This is actually going to be the uh, EVE flyby machine. Beautiful. And we'll save that and we'll put that out on the pad. I want to see, first off, how well we go about lifting this. As a secondary question, what if we made the upper stage also nuclear? Like, the current lander stage. Obviously, we can get rid of the landing legs as well. That's unnecessary weight. But I want to see just switching this down to being nuclear-powered and running a Cherenkov there. How does that do on our liftoff here? So our thrust to weight is 1.65. I'm pretty sure this gets into orbit just with this booster stage, right? I'm pretty sure. But we'll see. Again, we're going to be reverting this. I just want to test a couple of things here. Structural stability here is something that I'm very interested in seeing as we lift this off. I am seeing some wiggling happening here. Which isn't great, to be clear. Yeah, there's definitely some wiggling happening. So I think we're going to have to do a couple of modifications to the structural integrity of this thing. So I'm just locking to prograde here. So far, it seems reasonably doable. And this will be reverted. So this is definitely reasonably doable. We're seeing this stage here going up and up and up and up which is exactly what we want to see. Once we hit vacuum, this is going to be a way, way higher, right? Like, ridiculously high. It's already quite high. Apoapsis height of about 52 here. SRBs detach. Going into stability assist. How do we do stress testing this with a horizon turn? It's a little bit wonky feeling, but it gets the job done. So we now burn here for a while. We can definitely lessen our weight up here as well. And the way that we do that is by dropping the oxidizer, switching this over into also being nuclear. Since we're not planning on landing, that's fine. We'll ditch the landing legs for sure. We'll keep the strap on fuel tanks. Looks like we're not quite pushing into orbit at this time. But I mean, it is close enough. 98, 99, and 100. Cool. So then we circularize that, and what does that end up looking like? Okay, so it looks like this. We're at 2105 here. 2106. What's that actually going to be when we hit vacuum, though? That's the question. And of course, the staging is really messed up. We definitely need some strutting together up here. I think that's very clear. Okay, 2106 is what we've got there. Interesting. I did actually expect that, that nuclear propulsion stage to be a little bit higher. Fascinating. So we're continuing to warp forward a bit here, and we can commence this burn as of now. Okay, what's our thrust to weight? 0.69? I mean, that's not abysmal. Not abysmal at all. Okay, so let's revert that back. I've gotten the information that I need, so that's great. Now we're going to consider... Well, first off, we're going to ditch the landing stress. We're not planning on landing with this. And that, of course, also means that we can drop this container module. That is unnecessary weight. And unnecessary height as well. 
So that's fine, and we'll just drop our photovoltaic panels there for now. I do want it to be more like that. There we go. Okay. We could extend this tank in theory. That is a possibility. We can also come down here and ditch this carrier. We can put in a nuclear engine here as well, which this will add a lot of height, no doubt about that. And then we can ditch the oxidizer up here. Now, what that will end up doing is saving us a good amount of payload weight, which will be very, very beneficial for us. Then we definitely want to make sure that we're strutted. Uh, this is not correct. Quad couple it, please, and strut that in here. I also want to make sure that we are strutted in from here to here to add in some stability there. Then I want to also make sure that we are strutted. I mean, we are strutted right there. So this actually shouldn't be a problem. Okay. There's a lot of struts here, no doubt about that. And do we want to think about extending this stage? I have aerodynamics concerns about this. If we were to take this up to say, a Jumbo 64. Uh, if we were to do this, the majority of this weight is oxidizer. So if we were to do that, I have height concerns. I have aerodynamic stability concerns. So we'll test those and see how those end up going. What is our lift power? 1.61. That is not that much worse, actually. That's broadly similar. So that's not bad. Let's go through and do our staging here real quick. So that stage is fine. That fires. This should not fire here. This should fire more like here. This should go more like up here. And of course, these are what? Uh, drogue shoots? Yeah, those are drogues. So they would go... Something like this. Actually, these would just go down here. And we do something like that. Okay. So that would be the staging there. Cool. Now the question is, what does this flight profile look like? How bad is it with the additional height in here? We've added a lot of height. Which means that things might be a little bit spicy, but we have spiced up, or rather spruced up, the structural integrity. So let's take a quick look at how this goes. To be clear, this is wildly overkill. You don't need you don't need to have nuclear engines like this in order to go to Eve. <laughs> I want to throw that out there. This is unnecessary. I I'm I just I this is the new shiny and I want to do it. <laughs> but it's very very unnecessary. So we're going to accelerate up here and off we go. Initial ascent looks good, but we knew that would be the case with a 1.61 thrust to weight. It was slightly lower thrust to weight initially, but we do have a lot more fuel here and we have less weight up here. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, there's definitely a little bit of wiggling in this joint. There's no doubt about that. We've got a bit of a bend going on here. As long as we're cautious, that shouldn't be a big deal. So I'm just gonna park here for right now, and then we'll we'll hit prograde. And we'll just stick to prograde like this. Cool. So that would be the idea here then. It's flying reasonably well. Reasonably well. The nuclear engines are wildly overkill for this. <laughs> I, I don't know why, I just find them fun to use. It's, it's pretty dumb, but I like it. What can I say? <laughs> this is not ideal. Okay, SRBs are gone. At this point, let's stress test going to the horizon. I see that our apoapsis is about right for that. Which, of course, means that we wanted a steeper gravity turn. But this is what we've got. And with that bending in the center, I feel like it's okay. So we're just going to get horizontal speed now. And push that apoapsis on up with that horizontal speed. 
Checking in on this, we're already at 3,500. And then this up here is another 3,000. I mean, this has a lot of range. That's for sure. Like, a whole lot of range. So we're not going to quite get into orbit with this. I'm not shocked about that. If we really wanted to get into orbit, we'd probably double our number of SRBs. Go to four instead of two. But honestly, I think this is good enough. Yeah, that pushes us up to there. Now we can coast. And we can coast to about here. And we do something like this. It's claiming that's going to be a six-minute burn. I don't know how real that is. Okay. Yeah, that's actually going to be a one-minute, 34-second burn. That's more like it. So we're definitely a bit slow to turn with the reaction wheel. There's no doubt about that. But this seems viable, actually. Like, this seems very viable. This would do the trick. It's kind of dumb, yeah. Wildly overkill, yeah. But, uh... I mean, it's not as bad as if we were doing it with Xenon engines. <laughs> does this have gimbal? It does. Okay. Noted. Not very powerful gimbal based on uh, how we're turning here. That's fine. I'm actually surprised it has gimbal at all. This would do the trick. I mean, we could graduate this into a real flight at this point just for the sake of time. These guys will all be along and that's fine. I mean, we could. We certainly could. I think we may as well, to be honest. What's the point in doing another launch like that when we're just going to do the exact same thing, right? So I think that we just call it good here, and we just go with this. It'll be completely fine. This will do the trick. So we should extend our solar panels. And we're off to Eve at this point. Now, all we have to do is do a flyby of Eve, right? We don't have to do anything else. Turning speeds are a little bit spicy. No doubt about that. Yeah, this thing does not have much gimbal. That's for sure. <laughs> and we're trying to turn a lot of weight here. But as this fuel gets burned down, there will be a lot less weight. And the fact that we don't have to deal with oxidizer is helpful. So we're now officially in orbit. It's a little bit weak on the first stage. Like I said, a, a decent change to that would be to double the amount of SRBs. So that sounds good. And from here, I think we just do a slingshot around the moon and use that to propel ourselves out of the Kerbin system. And from there, it's pretty easy. So we just do timing here kind of like this. That is not an impact trajectory. Cool. So that's a moon slingshot there, 840 meters per second. And we'll still have two kilometers per second in this tank here. Like, we have a lot. Plus another roughly three and a half kilometers per second up here. More than enough. What is going to be the thrust to weight on this? 0.43? Sure, that's fine. And it'll be even higher once those drop tanks go off. Cool. So we're going. Let's do it. We're time warping through here. Five minutes on the time warp. And we'll warp a little bit further. This thing is not amazingly controllable because of the uh, weight issue. But that's fine. I'm not too concerned about it. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Beautiful. So this is going to be about a two-minute burn here. Here's a question. How does it work with physics warp? Looks very rigid, actually. Cool. I like it. I think that's really good. Yeah, very, very good on the uh, stability. Nothing squishing together. I love it. I'm just adjusting our heading here ever so slightly. Okay. 
We've just got a few seconds left in this burn. And we want to hit it fairly accurately if we can. 20 sec or 20 meters per second, 10. And let's get that last little bit in there. This thing definitely doesn't love turning, but it's manageable. Looks like a good encounter and a good escape. I like it. So at this point, we'll warp over to here. Um, there's no science to get here. Let's actually warp into In Space High. Goodbye, Kerbin. We will be back. Okay, no science to be gotten here. Let's warp to Moon High. Where are you at, Moon? There you are. Hi, Moon. Let's see if we get if, if we get any science here. What do we got? Magnetometer report. Grab it. So there's our magnetometer report. Beautiful. We'll collect that. And time to go to moon low. I'm not sure if that's quite going to get us into moon low. Uh, we're in space high here. Okay. So let's go to around here. This is in space near, but there's no science to be gotten here. Okay, cool. So at this point, we should warp to here. Goodbye, moon. Thanks for the gravity assist. Beautiful. You know, we should probably deploy our antenna. Otherwise, these guys are going to be very upset about their spotty Ketflix. So Ketflix uh, data here. There we go. We'll go ahead and extend that. I have no idea if this is going to connect us at EVE. Um, that could be interesting. We'll see. But for now, of course, we need to do our Kerbin escape, which is going to be what? Out like here? Yes. So we'll warp on out. Goodbye, Kerbin. Goodbye, Moon. Minmus is around there somewhere. It's very small. Hard to see. I don't know where it is. There it is, actually. Hi, Minmus. Bye, Minmus. Very, very small indeed. So we're about to escape Kerbin for the first time. We're going to get ourselves a world first milestone there. And we're going to collect all of our data here that we can. Beautiful. This is going to be a lot of data. And we're going to get a silly amount of science for this, for the record. So that's all great. We're going to collect all of that data up here. So we're going to collect the data. Then we're going to have Bob EVA. We're going to EVA report. We are going to let go and we're going to hop on over here. Okay. We'll open up our service bay. We will restore the science junior. We'll restore the mystery goo containment unit. And we're going to observe the mystery goo and conduct the material study for both of these. And we're going to store these in our pod. So we'll collect that data and restore. Collect the data and restore. We'll close the door. And this will get stored, as I said, in the pod. Beautiful. We're not going to grab a third one. We have nowhere to store it. So that's all we're going to get for now for in space high over the sun. But we set Eve as our target here. And our descending node is out over this direction. Sure. We'll add a maneuver over here, and that is going to be 2.1 degrees. Okay, so just something along the lines of that. 300 meters per second, I like it. And we'll rotate on over very, very slowly. Where even is Kerbin at this point? We can probably see it. I just don't. Yeah, there it is. Hi, Kerbin. It is very small. Beautiful. So we're going to hop over here. This is going to be a 120 day time warp, which is going to be a little bit long for sure. But off we go. Goodbye, Kerbin. Cool. 50 second burn once we get there. Unable to transmit deployed science data. Co has no comms connection. Okay. Well, that probably will change. And yeah, we can see our signal strength just dropping away. We're not connected. Unfortunately, these guys no longer have access to Ketflix. I'm I'm very sad about that, but not as sad as they are. Like, look at how sad they are. They're they're just they're so sad. <laughs> I say as they're all just grinning like maniacs. 
Oh, wonderful. We're going to warp forward a little bit further here. We don't need a connection for this manned flight, so that's fine. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Beautiful. So let's get that inclination change done, but it is about time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we are going to head off to EVE with this ridiculous atomic-powered ship. <laughs> Uh, it, it's quite ridiculous, for the record. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, James, Shadow Wolf, Mlohan80, Rogue Corvid, Kintogan, Andy Magar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time. I'm uh, currently chasing this node a bit. It's gone a little bit haywire. But uh, there we go. There's our inclination change done. Is that good enough? Yeah, 0.0. .0. Cool. <laughs> see you all next time.